Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, and I'm running to be the next vice chair of the Libertarian National Committee. And one of the big things that I push for is just trying to get everyone to the table, okay? People who are, who consider themselves radical, people who consider themselves pragmatic, people who consider themselves sort of uh, long-time LPRs versus new entrants. Um, basically trying to get everyone to be able to work together and move forward on the same page. And sometimes, I think a lot of what helps bring people together is just clarifying expectations, helping understand each other, and those are the kind of things I try to focus on, and not necessarily always picking sides, but trying to help communicate in a way so both sides can understand where the other side is coming from, so to build that line of communication. So today what I wanted to do is um, give you an analogy to kind of help understand um, where the party is at the moment, okay? Um, I used to be really into music. I used to be a concert promoter when I was in college uh, because I generally don't drive. That's why one of the reasons I live in New York City. All these years I do have a driver's license. I just don't drive that often. Um, so basically instead of uh, me going to my favorite bands, I'd bring my favorite bands to, to Bowling Green, Ohio, where I was going to college. And uh, basically, when you see a band, generally the first sort of the, the early audience of that band, when they're playing small dive bars, are sort of the real diehard fans. That's generally how you, you start building up your fan base, okay? Because it's those small diehard fans who will show up to every show, who will buy the merchandise, who will stick through uh, you in those early days when things are a little sloppier, when things aren't, um, you know, your van breaks down and you miss a show, they're gonna be more forgiving, okay? And as as your and then also again they're the ones who sort of signal to other people oh maybe I should go look at this band because look at how interested these people are, um, so it's those original diehard fans that help build that original impetus okay but it's also those original diehard fans that sometimes can be um, the most zealous about the band and get most critical of the new fans like oh well I liked them before you guys like them um, so you know you have no no reason to be here or you know they kind of have that it's a, it's a difference in attitude they kind of resent the new people um the new fans and then as the band gets bigger and bigger and bigger um so many people like them it's no longer it's no longer niche it's no longer cool and um so basically you start hearing the accusations that the band is so loud even though maybe the band has just sort of evolved over time um in the, in their aesthetic in their uh in their context, because your as your experience changes in life, so does the way you are creative. Okay, and that's what happens to bands. Okay, basically, you know, in the early days, life is more raw, more difficult when you're an early band, and your music reflects that. As things get more comfortable, uh, your music's gonna reflect that. Um, so you see that sort of dynamic happen in bands. Okay. But the thing is that you need all those fans because you still need the diehard fans because it's the diehard fans that create, that really manufacture the culture around the band and, and really drive uh, the long-term longevity of the band because they're always going to be there. But you need all the other sort of more casual fans because they bring, uh, they, they basically, they pack the, they pack the stadiums there. And then when you pack the stadiums, you get in the news and you build, and you can build that core. And then at the same time, while you're building up that larger, more casual fan base, you're building up your core. New diehard fans enter. And that core gets bigger and bigger and bigger, meaning your long-term sustainability is better. Okay? But that long, that sort of layer of sort of casual fans helps build that. And that's kind of where like the LP is right now, okay? For a long time, it was the band that was surviving off its core following, its diehard fans. And as it's grown, as more, I guess, the casual fans have gotten in, um, this has created sort of a cultural clash, as you see when many bands kind of start to hit it big. Um, the, the cultural clash between sort of the diehards, the, 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 the believers, the ones who will never go, okay, and the more casual fans, okay, but again, that bigger size, that bigger growth will bring in more diehard fans and bring in more casual fans. And sewing that needle to keep them both happy is difficult, and that's where, you know, leadership, communication, all that stuff really plays a role, okay, and this is where, you know, uh, separates the bands that last forever versus the bands that uh, go out and uh, <laughs> a blazing ball of glory because they can't handle uh, the surge of fame, they can't handle uh, the struggles of trying, not necessarily being able to make everyone happy because you can't, but trying to balance out every, all the different demands um, from everyone who cares about what you do. Okay, so with that in mind, it's just sort of, sort of this is the kind of dynamic that I'm seeing throughout the party. We're 
starting to make it, we're starting to get into that bigger stage, okay? And you're starting to have sort of a more mainstream audience and sort of the older sort of diehard fans um, sort of resent that mainstreaming to some, to some extent. Some people embrace it, some people don't. Um, and there's this cultural clash, okay? Now the cult that cultural clash should not end up in it only being the mainstream audience or it only being sort of the core original audience. It should, there's gotta be, and there can be a way where both can coexist, but both have to understand that it's not going to be perfect for either, either side, okay? Um, so that's sort of the analogy so, so to help understand where I'm coming at. Um, because this is, this is it's the same dynamic you see with any organization, any kind of movement that grows. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is if you're someone who considers yourself like an incrementalist, I would ask you to apply that to being in the LP as well. So if you think that you can change you know, that the best way to change a government slowly, small by small steps, then realize that that's going to apply to the LP too. You're not going to come in and just change everything about the LP's culture and identity, um, but there may be maybe incremental steps that help bring us all together that both sides can live with. Um, okay, and at the same time, we don't want to necessarily lose, we don't want to lose our soul and forget sort of the bold, um, powerful ideas that are at the core of, of why we've grown and why we represent what we represent. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an identity crisis, it's a, a crisis of culture, but it's a good crisis because it means we're growing. Okay, and that's why this 2018 convention is so important because it's the first convention since we really had, since we kind of broke through the wall because the 2016 convention happened like right before really that surge of consciousness. Okay, so this is gonna be the first time that sort of this sort of newer, bigger LP gets to sit together and discuss what their goals are, what the leadership is, and whatnot at the national level. It's been done at the state level, county level, etc. And again, the goal should be to find a way that we can move forward together, and that's that's the goal. Okay, um, and it's not going to be an, an easy discussion. It, it's going to be a frustrating discussion at times, but that's where we are as a party. And on the other side is a much greater stage, a much greater uh, ceiling far as where we can go once we kind of have that discussion and, and resolve those disputes, okay? And that's why I want to be vice chair because I'm someone who, I, I see that and I want to facilitate that discussion, facilitate that, um, you know, not pick sides in it, just kind of sit there and say, okay, here's where we're at, let's move forward, let's move forward together. So hopefully you guys find that interesting and useful in thinking about what's going on in the party and your interactions with other party members. You guys have a great day and enjoy.